Natural theology represents a particular strand within Christian thinking, and, and it's very, very important for uh, Christian natural philosophers when they consider their own role. They believe that what they're doing is, is reading one of the two books that God created at the beginning of time. Uh, one of them is the Bible, which talks about the history of the world in its political and religious format. And the other book is, is the book of nature, the, the way that God named things at the beginning of time, uh, the names of which we, we've lost, if you like, uh, because of the fall, uh, but which we're, we're gradually regaining through scientific knowledge. So people who do natural philosophy see themselves as, as priests of nature. And when they look at the natural world, they, they read off from that the existence of God. They, they can see that this world could not have arisen by chance. And in doing so, they argue very strongly against uh, many of the, the, the classical world's uh, atomists, people like Epicurus, Democritus, and Lucretius. These are the great thinkers of the ancient world who had argued, in a sense, that you can get order simply through the chance concatenation or mixing of various particles. I mean, two most thinkers, nearly all thinkers in the 17th century, uh, and virtually all thinkers in the 18th century. This is absurd. The idea that the order we see in the world, the beauty we see in the world, could have arisen by chance is obviously absurd. There are many examples of this, I think. You, you can look at the, the way in which uh, various creatures uh, reproduce themselves and, and tend from one generation to the next to, to reproduce uh, beings that look somewhat like themselves. Uh, there's, the, there's the way in which various creatures uh, cohabit uh, parasites and, and all sorts of other creatures in a very complex way that could only have been designed by some extraordinary mind. And then finally, I think, in, in astronomy, um, people look at the way that the heavens are made up and they begin to think about the condition of human beings. They begin to ask how it is that we have come to be where we are. You know, if the world was five degrees or 10 degrees colder, we would be dead. If the world was 10 degrees hotter, we would all be dead. If we were close to the sun, we'd be too hot. If we were further from the sun, we'd be too cold. It looks as if the earth has been plonked where it is for a specific reason. It could not have arisen by chance.